Hey, what's up guys? Back with another Tuesday vlog. I didn't film one last week because it was like 20 degrees and that's way too freaking cold for me. Today it's like 70 degrees, so I'm stoked about that because DJI just came out with a new firmware for the FPV system, so I'm gonna be testing that for a few reasons. So we've got, we have autofocus mode. So what that is, instead of focus mode where the sides blur, this will blur the sides when it feels like it's necessary. Otherwise, the whole picture should be clear. So we'll test that out. We've got 200 and 500 milliwatt modes. Um, more on that later. It saves the OSD as a text file that you can overlay. I don't know if I'm going to do that in this video because it seems like it's kind of a process. You either have to use a another program in addition to your editor to like blend the text file as captions onto the video like it, it just kind of seems like a hassle so i'm not sure if i'm going to use it but i can go back and watch the dvr on the goggles with the osd displayed on the dvr playback so that's kind of cool so that you know i can maybe use that for confirmation and the other cool feature i'm not going to test this today but it says they optimize the AV input for analog. I don't know if you can hear that. Someone's out here flying like model airplanes line of sight. This is, this part, people have been flying at this park forever. They optimize the AV in for analog and they gave you the ability to adjust the field of view and the OSD no longer stays on the screen. So, you know, big news for guys that have the system but want to keep flying analog through these goggles. Um, like I said, I'm not going to test that today. You know, if I get that iFlight 3D printed cover thing to use my fusion module maybe i don't know i'm not super worried about it so what i'm testing right now is um this is the same park i was at when i first tested these true rc antennas and the single x air so basically what i'm going to do is see if they've changed the performance at all um because you know i already have a baseline for flying at this park the way i'm going to fly it with the stock antennas, I was getting five megabits, and with the singularities, I was getting seven. So we'll see how the singularities compare with the firmware update. And if there's any change, then maybe I'll throw both of the X Airs on, and we'll see how those do. And then th that's going to be really quick, because after that, I'm going to run back out to the lake and do another HD versus analog comparison. Um, but this time it'll be more even because they'll both be on 200 milliwatt, right? So yeah, I'm gonna bang out this really quick and then head over to the lake and We'll talk more about the firmware update there All right, I'm gonna try to be quick because uh, there's people here parks and rec just showed up and these I'm sure these model airplane guys are gonna like be interested so hopefully they don't bug me while I'm flying. I'm gonna do like four passes with the singularities um, just to get an average lowest megabit and I'm kind of curious to see just how it feels. Just as a refresher guys um, what I'm doing here is I'm flying past these trees but I'm putting a bathroom in between me and the quad and that's what's causing the signal to drop right. And again, on the singularities last time, I was getting about 7 megabits. <sighs> oh, there's Parks and Rec people. Uh, I saw 12, but I'm... See, I got distracted because of the Parks and Rec people. Try again. Thirteen megabits, guys, at twenty-five milliwatts. So that's that's an improvement. I'm only gonna do one more. Seven point nine. Okay, now I gotta do a fourth pass. Parks and Rec people think I'm probably messing with them. Mm. 
9.8. Okay, so on average, I would I would say it's higher. Yeah, lowest was 7.9, but then 9.8, 12, 13. Um, so on average, it seems to be performing better. Um, and there's not really any variation in the environment because, you know, it's a bathroom. Because you can, you can make them go supersonic, but usually it's, I think it's a... Yeah, I think it's above like 40,000. Yeah. All right, guys, so I've spent about the last probably hour and a half driving, um, trying to salvage the day. I, uh, I drove out to Nampa to the lake where I did my initial tree test where I compa compared analog to HD, but apparently it's closed for winter because they don't want people like launching their boats from that, that side of the lake. So I couldn't fly in that park. Um, so I drove all the way back to basically downtown Boise and I'm at one of the parks downtown and there's some, some people at the playground, but I don't see a lot of people in just the park area. So I'm hoping I can get away with flying at least, I don't know, a couple of packs. So basically what I'm going to be doing is since the firmware update, um, I have 200 milliwatt on HD now. So now I can compare analog to HD at 200 milliwatt. Um, and I'm just going to kind of fly around. There's, there's a lot of trees here. I'm going to try to put some trees in the way. Um, I'm only going to be using Omnis. So I don't want to hear anything about like which direction my head is facing because it's omnis and it doesn't really matter. I had to like jam out of that first part because the guy flying the model airplanes just like started talking at me hella loud. And he's done it before. Like I've had a conversation with that guy across the parking lot where he's like shouting, asking about mini quads. So yeah, trying to salvage the day. Let's see if I can get some flights in. We'll see how um, I'm going to be using the uh, fusion module. We'll see how that looks at 200 milliwatt. Um, that is on the latest firmware as well. Uh, so we'll see how that looks compared to the HD system. I forgot to DVR, let's do that again. Okay, let's try it again with DVR. That. See this? I, I'm guessing I'm putting this thing in front of me. So I'm kind of just like at the back of the park. It's not bad close to the ground, but up in the canopy, uh, it's doing better this time around. Ooh, branches. Yeah, it does not. Oh, yeah, it's doing a little bit better this time. That's weird. Yeah, we're getting a little bit of breakup. And again, this is at 200 milliwatt, no directional antennas. So I don't know, you know, with these blending modules, I don't know if you're, you know, if you're having to deal with penetration, I don't know if it's better to run in legacy or fusion. I'm assuming the blending mode would be ideal. From what I understand, the legacy mode, traditional diversity is just better for long range. And you know, this isn't long range. All right, guys, that was analog. Uh, not too bad. Um, you know, I do have a few big trees in that like oven thing in front of me. So let's try um, HD at 200. All right, same antennas. Um, like I said, Omnis, see how she does. Got some interested parties. Hopefully nobody like chases after me.
So yeah, I mean, I'm getting some pretty bad breakup on the HD too. But, and again, this was with Omnis, but jeez, it's still like 100% better. And it doesn't care about like low light, and unfortunately the sun is set. But like I have, like I can like cut through these trees now because I can like see all the branches. My uh, latency seems to be pretty locked below 25 milliwatt as well. Oh. <laughs> That's downtown Boise. I like, I'm forgetting to narrate because I'm just like enjoying the scenery. You can like see all these brown, what is that, kite? See there's like a ton of little ghost branches in there that you can see. But yeah, there's no way that I could be, you know, flying through this canopy on analog because it would, for one, it'd be breaking up and two, I wouldn't be able to see. Like, is this is this what you do with the Cinewhoop? You like fly through tree branches? Who needs a Cinewhoop? The autofocus mode is interesting because it sometimes blurs the whole screen. I don't know how much I'm liking in this scenario because it's not, it doesn't like the vegetation. Ooh. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not like at 200 milliwatt. That's like plenty for this like size of park. I'm not really feeling any issues. I really don't like the auto record function. That kind of irritates me. I want to be able to like control my recordings and you know, like I don't want it to record every time I fly. That's just, it's irritating. <clears throat> okay, so that was uh, just kind of like redoing some tests with the new firmware update. I think, I think they improved the performance somehow. Um, I don't know if that's just, you know, specific to 25 milliwatt if they up the power or if they improved the algorithm or, or what have you, but it, it does seem to work a little bit better. And even here in these trees with how much it's breaking up, um, I'm still not feeling like a ton of latency. And when I did glance down in the corner, I um, wasn't seeing higher than like 25 milliseconds. I'll have to watch the DVR back and, um, you know, confirm. Now, as far as comparing DJI to, to analog um, it's you know it's just it's just you know it's just fun for me you know I'm still like I said I still have analog because I'm going to train with it for racing because it's it's harder to fly analog um, especially depending on like the lighting and and now that it's fall the lighting is it's like kind of cool and harsh and it like it analog just you don't realize it if it's all you know but it's it's a it's kind of a struggle com compared to these. And again, you know, it's not like I'm not sponsored by DJI. Like everything that I'm experiencing and everything that I'm sharing with you guys, you know, that's that's just kind of like what I'm experiencing and you know, like what I'm getting out of my money. I mean, these things are just they're just like amazing. Uh, it, they're amazing. I like I can't I can't find a lot to fault with them. So, okay, so like in the next firmware update, they said that they're gonna make it to where you can record analog oh and that you can customize the osd 
which that I'm excited about. I want to be able to move my OSD around so I can like see the bit rate and um, the voltage in my field of view. That I'm excited about. But yeah, the, the analog, you know, I did, I bought the Fusion module just to, just to try to make the, the analog experience a little bit better. Um, cause, cause yeah, I am going to practice with it. You know, as far as doing these comparisons for fun and you know, they were both at 200 milliwatt. I mean, I mean, it's, it's not quite apples to apples, but analog doesn't really compare to this. I mean, it, it just, it just doesn't, you know, and, you know, and I've flown it for years. It just like, even with the fusion module, the way that the signals breaking up in, in just this like small area, I was only flying about 150 feet out with this. I mean, I went farther with HD, but with this, I was only going about 150 feet out and it was just on the, on the DV, the DVR footage, I wasn't losing any sync, but on the first flight, I was losing sync. It was like flipping and, and flashing black and white. There's not many scenarios where analog compares to DJI HD. I mean, I can't, I can't think of many scenarios where using analog makes more sense, aside from timing systems and racing. People talk about variable latency, but that's that's really kind of a non-issue. It's I, like once you get the antenna situation sorted out. Um, the latency is it's a non-issue and in who knows maybe they boosted the power on 25 milliwatts So it'll work even better. I mean, we'll have to wait to find out I'll just kind of touch on the uh, HDO2, um, you know, I'm not gonna I Mean obviously there's a lot of people that are gonna order them. There's a lot of fans of Fat Shark OLED goggles and OLED goggles in general um, I you know, I have used the HDOs and in they, you know, they do work a little bit better than traditional analog goggles. Um, you know, I'm not going to criticize people for ordering HDO2s. I'll just say that I'm surprised they're still, like, they still cost as much as they do. Like, I don't know, and this is not me being harsh or, like, being a dick. I'm just like, I don't know if $500 analog goggles without any kind of a receiver. I don't know if that's like sustainable. I think, I mean, I think we're shifting towards like all digital and I don't, I don't know if that much money for analog goggles is sustainable. I mean, if like, if you think about it, if they figure out how to get the timing working with DJI, I mean, I mean, that'll kind of be like the end game. I mean, you won't, there won't be a lot of reason to still be flying analog at that point, I would say. I mean, a lot of people will be skeptical and they'll be like, oh, but the latency, I mean, it's not really a thing. And if you think about it, like people tend to forget this, but analog cameras don't have fixed latency. Not, not even close. It's like, it's all over the place. Like, yeah, the lowest can be like 15 milliseconds, but it's gonna fluctuate between like 10 and what I think I've seen like 10 and 30 milliseconds. I mean, like video feeds don't have fixed latency. So it's like people are making, I think, I think people are making a big deal about the latency with the DJI system because they put it in the OSD. It's like now that people have that information, they're losing their minds. But I mean, all video has variable latency. It's not fixed. It's, I mean, if you look at the testing, they, you know, they, they get an average over a hundred samples. I mean, it's, it's different like every time. Um, but I think, I think, I almost think DJI putting the latency in the OSD was a mistake. Maybe not a mistake, but, but people see that information and they like, don't know what to do with it. They, you know, they think like, oh my God, my, my, uh, my predators five milliseconds and oh that's just horrible blah 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 i mean like no no like all cameras have variable latency um so i mean that's just like kind of like an interesting piece to me and you know if you don't if you don't like live with the the dji system you're you're really not gonna understand if you try it once with somebody's stock antennas and there's like five of their quads in the air yeah you might feel some latency but once you live with the system and you um, swap out the antennas and you figure out the spacing of the pilots. Um, it's like, it's flawless. It's like, it's, it's been completely flawless for me. So yeah, anyway, guys, again, I, I didn't mean to ramble. Um, that's the firmware update. I'm glad I was able to get some packs in before the sun went down. Now it's getting cold again. Um, I'm going to head home, start editing. 
and I'll hopefully have this up by morning. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.